What's up, Digidestins? This is Kyle D, better known as Rhyme Avatar, and today we have a bunch of Digimon TCG hot takes. Everybody submitted through Facebook, and we also have our good friends on YouTube. You guys watching it commented on my post, so we go. We're gonna go over all of it, and it's a longer video, but hopefully you enjoy your Labor Day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and let's dive into this video. So, guys, I asked not just facebook but i asked you guys the viewers here what is some of your digimon hot takes let's let your voices be heard and your opinions on digimon tcg so what is your opinion you can say the wrong one i don't care let's just see what people are saying uh toby cool while we while me wanting replants of staples i would love to see a more hands on the ban list that doesn't kill a deck i definitely agree on that there are times where just like they kill off the deck completely, but maybe not completely kill it off, but slow it down a little bit more would be beneficial. I'm more surprised that, you know, we saw the hit towards yellow hybrid and the deck is still actually fundamentally strong, which is not wrong for it to exist like that. So I think it's going to be weird for a little bit. We might see some resurgence once they give support, but... Killing off a deck completely out of format is kind of wrong in my opinion. Make it a little weaker, but make it at least playable for the format and not be a lot worse, you know? Kish here. I honestly would love to see the Digimon card game release something like a Megaton that has reprint cards from the first few sets like BT1, Magna Angemon, and Omnimon Zawart Defeat. I think, yeah, a lot of people want to have that aspect. Wants to be able to go like, hey these cards are harder to find you can't buy boxes at the moment because once they're sold they're sold out you're lucky if you can go into the store and buy bt4 i mean if they still have boxes there cool you get a chance at it bt1 and bt1.5 you're not gonna find it you are really not gonna find those sets because they're sold out completely most stores do not hold on stock like that uh, Bandai, for some reason, sees blue as the perfect deck that needs to stay on top. They need to relax and start supporting decks that have colors other than blue in them. Yeah, at times it seems like blue and yellow are kind of Bandai's go-to colors in card games. They're usually the most heavily, strongly supported decks. They usually have draw mechanics or powerful removal mechanics that most decks don't really have that the other colors are lacking in they have strong color identity for the other ones but they are just struggling to get to that color identity equal to blue and yellow so that's kind of bandai's fault they're just favoritism to their colors um hopefully we can see some differences but we'll have to see i like to see people take on fun casual decks from ku parking uh everyone on everyone's so tier one focused and it's a breath of fresh air to see a fun goofy deck that won't necessarily take the world by fire but it's a fun concept i mean yeah sometimes it's just good to see some random jank not like the constant tier one but the you get better when you play against tier one decks and people are really try hard so you can't expect casual players like that until they find their go-to color deck style that they like and then usually you find them go you find the diehards to those decks Usually once there's enough support, we're still early in the game where things aren't balancing left and right, where all the decks kind of just get a decent wave of support and they're all just playable. Just some of them need a second round of support that are just waiting too long. And that's usually card games faults anyway, because usually you have to support certain decks and they just know certain cards will sell heavily. I'm speaking more negatively as i am a big fan of uncommented decks or strategies that are that are not or yet to be supported archetypes that are not supported nor meta decks i've seen so many lord nightmon decks but no lord nightmon support in the upcoming boxes don devi dia boromon crest guru purple metal guru Mon, yet other decks get support blocks after blocks unfair distribution distribution of strength and strong cards being flexible in different decks my biggest hype is about Bialzabon deck. It is neglected now, but soon enough going to re receive some love. And that is true. Um, 
that is a flaw in any card game that you have archetypal support. Look at Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh!'s biggest issues come down to the fact of that they have they release almost a new archetype every two sets. And this new archetype doesn't always get enough support to bring it up. And they're all just like, okay, these are fun decks. I enjoy it. But, you know, bring them up to the tier 1.5 category and just, or even tier 2 status and have them hold there. Just enough just to really get the ball rolling, I think. Blue has a powerhouse for a long time. We need more balancing for all colors. Make pow full power of each color strength. I want to see more Digimon we haven't seen, like the enemy of Omnimon Ultra S, as well as the game of Sun and Dusk. And something that... Dawn and Dusk, not Sun and Dusk. Uh, something that has been annoying me with the game is the hard-to-get promo cards. Something hype about upcoming sets are more dual colors. Hot take, I hope Chaos Galamon comes back. It's possible. I mean, we have been getting, you know, the Dragon Form... Of Chaos Gallimon, so we could definitely see some support. They trickle it in just with Chaos Gallimon. But the problem is, Chaos Gallimon is just a little too slow. And that's just really just depending on how the Gallimon support goes. But EX3 gave Gallimon some more support. We'll have to see what happens there. But uh, I'm in for game needs rotation and power creep too fast spam. Uh, let's see. Rotation would kill the game. Yeah, right now. Yes, the rotation would kill this game at this point. And the problem comes down to is where's the cutoff points you would rotate? Um, that's really where it would have to lie on. Then basically what would happen with rotation right now, especially with how the power creep has been going. If you hit a certain point right now, let's say we hit now. Uh, let's say we stop at BT5. That kills off Blitz Omni, the Greymon deck, the Garurumon deck. All that back kills off that. So you don't have any support there. So now you're basically very underwhelming because the ex-antibody stuff was basically by itself. And that's going to cause issues. You don't have your game finisher in Blitz Omni. You lose Omnimon ex-antibody. You know, the I don't think ever this game will get a rotation just of how well... They are trying to support decks so with older support and bring them up to newer standards. I don't see this anytime soon, so I don't think rotation is healthy for this game anymore. Um, if we do that, we're going to see a lot of people just dropping off because a lot of decks become very unplayable at this point. So let's go on to the Facebook side. So first off, a lot of this game mechanics and cards are not made for best of three in mind that is kind of true and then there are some cards that are best in three in mind where cyborg is kind of needed because they're mandatory cyborg cards that only answer when you come across that so i think there are some design flaws with it the game was in japan is a best of one strategy most of the decks do lean towards either killing your opponent really quickly and not a best of three style of thought but that is just how that operates. So I think, to be honest with you, I like our best of three. It makes it seem healthier so that if you don't... Best of one always sucks. It feels like a casual game. And you're going to just brick. You're going to brick that game one. And then, you know. And then it becomes a die roll situation. That's really not what everybody likes. Uh, they need to make more Angel better without Mastamon. Also, Seraphimon deserves an alternate heart. I definitely agree. BT one's Seraphimon has been overdue for an alternate art. Also, Mamamon needs to come back. They seriously could afford a set without Agumon, Greymon, Omnimon. They are popular, but they aren't Goku. People realize Digimon recognize Digimon besides them. Bandai needs to understand this. Yeah, Digimon's more like Pokemon. You could just add any cards in the set. I mean, let's be honest. They always put up. I think what Pikachu is in almost every set after a certain point. Or every other set, you get a new Pikachu or something. But it's like, we we know what we're expecting. We can print any Digimon. But they're always skeptical because if you don't support a Goku-esque style like Digimon in the set, it might not sell well. So they're like, we have to go with the tried and true. 
And that's just kind of how that goes. I mean, BT11, really, really interesting how they went about it. It's very diverse for what you're looking at. You're not getting a lot of the name Digimon. You know, Mirage Galga. We're getting, you know, Phoenixmon support that really nobody asked for, but it's really cool support. I mean, Tyranomon got some support in there. And then you get other decks getting more support as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if they start doing more. If BT11 actually does extremely well in sales, I wouldn't be surprised if we have more sets like BT11. So be hopeful. I think BT11 could be a really good turning point because it didn't have a lot of nostalgia bait. Well, like Goku stuff-esque theme. We did get Black War Greymon, but most of it was nostalgia. It was a nostalgia set completely, video game theme arcs, and it had a little bit of closing off Cross Wars Season 2. So I feel like that pandering is really good, and I think BT11 is going to produce more good stuff. It is stupid in, in this day and age that anybody would consider releasing a card game physically, but not digitally. Digimon or any other franchise, card games are still niche among the Nerd circles in the casual market can do such do such to help with the lifetime revenue of the game that not developing one would be throwing away money and customers. They are trying something, but it's just like a slightly better tabletop version. And it's like, do we really need that? No. Let's make it fully automated. You could sell video games at this point. I mean, Carfight Vanguard's doing it. Yu-Gi-Oh! has basically a money system transaction that you could definitely pull off some shenanigans on it. I think at this day and age, yes, we should have a full-on, like, Master Duels for every card game. It's not that hard to simulate. I mean, it costs money, but people are going to spend money on digital, especially if you tell them we'll have an online regionals and a physical regionals. Giving them two chances of trying to get into that invite, especially since software is harder to brick on. Usually the shuffling mechanic will cause bricking, but at least you can say like, hey, it wasn't my shuffling or my opponent cutting. It was just instantly randomized. The game randomizes it and it's not terrible. So it, it and the randomizer tries to help out and doesn't like try to screw you over as often. So that's just something else. Uh, Tamer, Dependency, and Hybrids ruin the game in so many ways that Bandai has no ideas how to fix it and periodically fucks up and ends up powering up the most boring and nonsensical decks in the format. Apparently, they don't see a, to, seem to consider it a problem. They are considering it. They're starting to know that people are not happy with Hybrids. They aren't happy with Cross Wars, Shoutmons, Shenanigans with the save, and Hiding Under the Tamer. That's why they kind of boosted up that massive killing spree with Black War Greymon. But it's still not enough. They need more tamer hate. They need more ways of suspending tamers or locking them down that they can't unsuspend. There, There's options around that, but at the same time, it's like, I don't have always an out for that situation. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they go about it. And hopefully they improve on it. It's just going to take them time because it's really scary when, you know, every deck should needs their memory tamer. And it's really about killing the three cost. If they made more like three cost removalers and stuff like that, it made it so that the powerful three costs that are just basically the niche, the draws, the added memory gain and stuff like that, and lift the four cost alone, you might see more beneficial play that way. And I think that might seem like a healthier way, just not being able to kill the memory tamer. I think giving them the ability to gain memory and be able to play their turn is quite huge. And I think that's what they're trying to find is a healthy balance. So we're going to have to see how that goes in the future. Popular Digimon get crack support to sell more packs. Imperial Digimon is free, no pun intended. Meanwhile, Machine Digimon support is subpar, low, and inconsistent. Justice for Mugandramon. I don't know about that. EX3 gave it really solid support. Mugandramon has, since EX1, has been getting trickling support. And now with EX3 and now going into BT11 has gotten such a good support line that I wouldn't be surprised if this deck sits at tier 1.5 for a good while or even close to tier 1 status. It's going to be a high deck and it's a lot about ceiling and the problem comes down to the deck is a lot of RNG based. 
And that's really what the big issue with Mugandramon is. It's super RNG based because you still need to mill things into your trash, get things into the right spot, and be able to keep it your turn. So, I mean, they're alleviating with coming some of the options that are free, but you still got to draw into them. And you're not digivolving enough to justify in certain circumstances. So it's it's weird because it's like Mugandramon is a really powerful deck. Uh, Dio Borman is popular, and I'm still waiting for new support. It's popular in a niche way, but not popular in a way that Agumon and Bimon is. Um, I can argue that because Dio Borman was really a lot of fans' big bad, especially since Dio Borman is so powerful of a Digimon, and everybody can remember go turn back time, the clock scene. I can every Digimon fan that is a Dio Borman fan probably can recite. Diaboromon's main things from it. I can promise you that. So I don't see that. Diaboromon's a very popular villain. So I think out of most villains that people remember, Diaboromon's one of those big ones. Uh, Machine Jermon gets support never official in almost every set. Yeah, it does. It gets options here and there and then trickle in, but it's been getting decent support headway. They are trying their best to make that deck functional. Right, but I, as I said, the support is inconsistent or, and subpar. The support is situation. The best support is just cards, other archetypes that happen to slot in. Yeah, but we also get removal, things like that. And since there's always going to be a cyborg or something like that, you're going to get some benefit that both decks can have. So I don't... Machine Your Mind gets the most trickle-in support. Like, it gets like a leaky faucet kind of thing. Um, you can't play your favorite Digimon deck in this game and win, which is sad. You have to keep up with the latest sets, which is why I don't even bother to play. I I feel for, fad, bad for you. Well, yes, it's a business. If they released a set that had zero in incentive for a player to buy, it wouldn't sell. They make no money on it. The game would just get axed. Well, yeah, I understand that. But what I'm referring is the lack of supporting old decks. When they do support old decks, it doesn't even fix the problem that CAD just makes it a new playstyle. For example, new Rusty and Jessmon. Jessmon's still the same though. Rusty, yeah, a little bit of different style of play, but Jessmon's still the same. I mean, it fixed a little bit of its issues. It still OTKs you and does all the shenanigans. It just depends on your mindset. If you're a casual player that just wants to play your favorite, then you're support getting support. If you're a competitive player, you play the best deck that suits your playstyle. It's very rare in TCG that those will align, and a top competitive deck also includes also including your favorite characters. Yeah, that is true. Usually those decks fall under into the tier two category. They are competitively viable and they can hold their own, but it comes down to a lot of knowing what you're going to expect. But we're also needing more support in some way. Uh, which I get, however, you also have to take into consider the power gap in Digimon is literally so huge. Casual players like to win as well. We shouldn't need to get the best decks to win a few games. Top decks in Digimon right now literally have rookies with skills that are mega in older decks. I don't know about that, but I don't get what your idea of getting support is, but I've been having to make up support for Diaboromon in this last four sets so I can keep playing. It's since the deck is not getting any of it, it's not fun to play the Digimon. I like it if I'll be losing like 90% of my games unless I get almost perfect draws. Because being an older deck, it's always it's is way slower than anything currently played, even though it was already kind of slow in its prime. Yes, I know that it's not necessarily every deck can get support at once, but six or seven sets if BT11 has no Dia Boromon support, that which is likely won't without as much as a single new card we're we're really pushing players away from enjoying the game unless they spend on new viable decks of Digimon. They might not even like that much. I do think that they they want to do more consistency. I got to say EX3 really did hit it out of the park with supporting everything. But they do do a lot of new decks constantly. I mean, if they did maybe one set of just straight up. Here's support for everybody kind of thing. Like, here's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this and that. You would have a lot more viability for a lot of players. I think it's just smallly underrated right now. We're going to see a tick up, but I think we're... 
getting support now people are they're starting to realize they want more support and we already know there's x antibody support coming along the lines for dio boromon we know there's other support we know there's boss digimons that some decks don't have yet and realize something bt12 is going to help a lot of the decks around it's not even going to be funny so just keep in mind that a lot of the ace decks will get some decent support in that set i'll take the game is actually good well designed a very few outlying mistakes like time source can be solved relatively easy as the card pool grows each set the total amount of viable decks is increasing i definitely agree a lot of decks are increasing viability we're kind of getting to a point where almost every deck's like in this tier 1.5 category and then we're going into tier one so like concept decks are mostly people think are no longer good hybrids bonds imperial bell star d brigade mastermind etc are all still retaining viability but the community competitive amnesia is too strong so they're arrogant erroneously assuming arrogantly uh blah 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 they're assumed to automatically be bad now not always yes depends on the pilot and what you can do with the support you get and that's really what it comes down to we need to push for more casual plays and locals we have locals focus around a specific set like bt5 or bt4 how about no <laughs> no there's just sometimes it's just i don't always approve of it i feel like blue is getting too strong with every set as they basically have everything the other colors do but better also x antibodies could stay black and then shared with all colors that could have been a possibility there deck the Death X Mon is a trash card that needs to be restricted to black and purple decks. It's too strong without any risk to the player who plays it. How is it trash if it's too strong? Uh, it's trash because it's bad for overall game. Any card or deck that stops a player from engaging and playing the game is bad. Yeah, sometimes that the deck Death X Mon at a certain time can literally just hinder you to a point of you not coming back into the game. That is usually a problem in design uh once a death x gets on board and clears you out once sometimes if you cannot get rid of it or play things at a faster rate and cheaper and keep weird ratios death x can just really blow you out of the water so it's just something to look at the only way to actually win in this is to play current decks if you play anything slightly but the meta you will most likely lose unless the enemy bricks or misplays this makes it hard to try new things and have fun at locals because there's someone who is going to bring me metal guru mon x or alpha mon and just slam those trying to have fun even after a big event yeah that sometimes is a big issue like but sometimes you can there are ways around it maybe talk to your locals and go like can we put a restriction on like the top tier decks and we know that it's Alpha Mon. We know it's Metal Guru Mon. We know it's D Reaper. Like those taking first at consistent rate, we should try to tone it down a bit. That should be how that goes. There needs to be more male thrust trap mons. There's trap mons. Oh God, uh, we're not going to hit that with a ten foot pole. Uh, not a hot take, but Bandai needs to release a digi digital card, digital game to support those who can't play locally. Something like Yu Gi Oh has, but Bandai will probably mess it up like they did with the tcg app rip yeah hot take black war Greymon with bt1 war Greymon is the best deck of the format playing it with the gaiomon is playing the deck wrong a lot of people lisp top with offers the deck a lot more options black war Greymon bt1 only there against security control matchups and that i should know i play the deck <laughs> yes for hot takes not not correct <laughs> oh d reaper's galaxy brain deck <laughs> Rust Tyranim Tyranimon is a Galaxy Brain. Best deck in format. Exactly. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed everybody's hot takes. I know this was a little bit longer video, but I figured for, you know, Labor Day, you guys stay safe, stay healthy. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you like these hot takes. And comment down below your hot takes. Without further ado, remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next one. Peace.